Right then, as sport continues to struggle with the transgender row, the British Triathlon Federation's new policy for an open category came into force today. The sport's going to be divided into two categories for athletes over the age of 12. There'll be a female category for those who are assigned the female sex at birth and an open category, or in simple terms, all individuals, including male, transgender and those non-binary who are male sex at birth. British Triathlon said the new approach follows on from a survey of over 3,000 members that found 80% are in support of the changes. Meanwhile, in last week, uh, last week, the boxing, sorry, the World Boxing Council have announced they will introduce a transgender category for fighters, separate to the men's and women's categories. Now, to discuss this, I'm, I'm joined by former Olympic swimmer and uh, television presenter Sharon Davis. So welcome along. Happy New Year, Sharon. Is this the right move? It sounds a lot more inclusive and fair to me. Good. Yes, good. I mean, well, triathlon have been leading the way, really, in this country with setting that policy. They announced that they were going to do that uh, the middle of last year. Um, and it's a very fair policy. You know, if this is about protecting the female category, but creating an opportunity for everyone to be involved in sports. So that's why we have the open category. You mentioned transgender women. So those, that is people that are biologically male, but also enables people that are biologically female that are on testosterone who wouldn't be allowed to compete in the female category because that would break the rules to be able to compete as well. So this is enabling everyone to be able to compete, but it's also enabling females to still have fair sport, which is what I've always been fighting for. Well, I'm sure I, because, of course, there was the big story uh, around last year, Leah Thomas, the University of Pennsylvania uh, swimmer, uh, who, of course, had transitioned from a man and was just an incredible swimmer and just won everything. And then the weightlifter as well. We had these two really um, stark cases that proved in a way how things needed to change, however tricky the situation was and however inclusive any government governing body was trying to be. Clearly, some kind of they needed to do some, I guess, lines in the sand and just say, look, we need to make some rules here. And this does seem, I hate to say, like common sense has prevailed. Yeah, I mean, that is what we've been after all along, really, is basically using the science. So there's 17 peer-reviewed science reports in the world, the last just before Christmas, which shows that we cannot remove male puberty advantage. Now, in Olympic sport, that's anywhere from about 10% to weightlifting at 30%. In something like boxing, a male and a female of equal weight, so this isn't someone bigger or stronger, this is someone of equal weight and height and size, a male will hit 160% harder onto a female structure, which actually is more fragile. Our bone structure is more fragile. So it's incredibly dangerous in something like a contact sport and in boxing, uh, rowing, you know, you know uh, uh, um, rugby, any of those, any of those contact sports are going to be incredibly dangerous. So it's really important that we put safety first. Then we put fairness and then we make sure we come up with ways to be inclusive because it really is important that everyone can do sport. It is. And this, for, for anyone that obviously is transitioning, it, it, it's obviously a hugely emotional time for them. Obviously, by the time they get to be competing like this, they will have transitioned and will have had to have done so for, I think, three years is what the IOC is saying. Um, but of course, it has to be fair yeah, because pe people, I was, well, I was going to say people like yourselves have trained all your life to do a certain sport. And then maybe there's, if the rules had stood and not changed, there would have been no chance, maybe. The second may have been the best you could have done. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, it, well, you say three years. I mean, actually, in lots of sports, it's way less than that. And at the NC2As, when you mentioned Leah Thomas, it was a year. And that was to do short you know, reduce your testosterone levels from male levels of testosterone to 10 nanomoles of testosterone per litre. I have less than one. Most females have less than one. So, you know, that was 10 times the average female, and they were still allowed to compete, and they only had to do that for 10 but, you know, for a year. The last study that came out pre-Christmas showed that it doesn't really matter. If you carry on training, if you suppress your testosterone, a male will lose very little strength. So it's just an unfair situation. And women have worked so hard to get, you know, some form of equality in sport. We still don't have that. We're still a very long way away from what males have in sport, but we are gradually getting there. And this was definitely going to put us back. So this isn't about... You know, anyone being transphobic or anyone not believing that sport is for everybody, this was about saying that biological females, which is half of the world, deserve the right to be equal opportunities of success in sport. And, and let's find better solutions. Let's find better ways. And, and female and open seems to me the, the best. But the World Boxing Council also announced just on Thursday that they're going to introduce a transgender league. 
Now, I'm for all for that as well. You know, if that's a way forward that, that transgender athletes would, would like it to be, then let's support that too. And let's make the federations work with transgender groups of people and athletes to find things that will work for them. Now, you came in for an awful lot of stick, didn't you, before, for your views. Um, why do you think that is? And do you think, actually, that has it calmed down? I hope it has for you. Uh, and do you think this will help okay. calm things down in general? Yeah, it has. I mean, I think FINA, the, the World Aquatic said, you know, um, Federation making their stance and deciding that they were going to protect female sport helped a great deal. That was off the back of what they could see happening with Leah. What, what I didn't want to happen was that for us to have to have a Leah in every single sport before people did what they already know. You know, we have two categories at the Olympic Games, males and females, for a reason. If we didn't have that, women wouldn't win events. It would be all won by men. So, so that is why we have it in the first place. And to say that there's no difference and testosterone makes no difference is actually ridiculous, you know? So let's be honest, let's work with the science and let's come up with really good solutions. Things have definitely got better. Um, right. I still get massive pile ups every once in a while, but you know, I've only ever wanted to work with the science and I've only ever wanted there to be fair sport for everybody. And I think when, when there is fair sport for men, there should be fair sport for women. But, I mean, let me give you a ridiculous example of what's going on at the moment in, in USA rowing, for example. So USA rowing have turned around and said in the women's category, anyone can identify as a woman and compete. But when it comes to the mixed relays, in other words, when there's supposed to be two women and two men, only biological females can take part because it will affect men. Now, you tell me how that is fair. Well, we're going to continue this discussion in just a moment. But for the moment, Sharon, thanks for joining us. And, uh, yeah, I wish you a happy new year. Really appreciate that. Let's bring in former boxing promoter Kelly Maloney and gender nebulous podcast presenter Frida Wallace. So, Frida, welcome along and a very happy new year. And also as well, Kelly, uh, how do you feel about these new rules? Do you feel they are fair? Is that to me? Yes, yeah, sorry, um, Frida. Yes, it is. We well, I, come, I don't come to this as a sports person. I'm quite willing to listen to Sharon talking about we should follow the science because I don't follow that kind of... What I, what's interesting to me about this debate is why it's happening now. And there's this kind of... And Sharon has thrown in with some quite transphobic people on Twitter, and that's just a matter of fact. And there's this kind of invasion narrative that trans women are taking over sports and it's going to be a problem for them. It really isn't. You can count, you can name them on one hand, maybe, the, tra the, the trans women that are making waves in sport. And also, this isn't a new thing. This goes back to like 1976 when Renee Richards, uh, she was in the US Tennis Open and she played as a trans woman. It didn't create the kind of hysteria that it does now. The reason these things are creating these waves now is because we live in a culture war climate. So somebody like me is seen as the other. You know, I, I you can criticize me based on my otherness. And that's the problem I have with it. I'm all for fairness in sport because it, it wouldn't make sense if somebody was winning everything. Like if I started... I'm not a sports person, but say if I entered a sports category, I do a bit of swimming and I just started winning everything, how would that benefit me? Because I'm like some kind of, there's no sort of trans superwoman that's winning everything. That's not happening. So I'm well, not I guess sure there where was, this... Th there was the case of, of Leah Thomas, and I suppose it highlighted She wasn't a, winning everything, Neil. She wasn't, but it highlighted a problem, uh, I guess, and it was a problem that was like, OK, maybe we need to try and be fair to everyone and inclusive for everyone, but how do we do that so that if you happen to be that person against Leah and you felt it was incredibly unfair that... You know, mm. you're trained all your life for that moment. I know, because the numbers, obviously, clearly, as you quite rightly say, are very small, but we're just trying to make it fair. I mean, do you think the specific one, for example, and, and the reason we're talking about it today is, of course, because uh, the rules have come into effect today. Um, so, say for British Triathlon, there is this open category. Does that seem like common sense to you? Actually, can I bring in you, Kelly? What do you think? Well, oh. I, I am from the sporting world, and I do believe in fair play and safety first in sport, um, you know, but you talk about the swimmer. Um, she only won one race. She was in yep. about eight races that day, and she didn't break any records like you like to say she did. And the New Zealand weightlifter absolutely didn't even qualify it after the first round. You have to remember, sport's not just about the physical side. It's also about the mental side. And sure. a trans person goes through a hell of a lot the stuff to get to where they are today and it affects them mentally yep. you know um, i agree with the wbc's rules 
what they come up with. I think that's very good because that is a sport that you have to have first class safety. But I think, you know, we will see how the triathlon thing goes. Um, the WBC have obviously set a precedence by setting uh, a trans category. So it's led the way for other sports to follow. It's more of a political decision than a sports decision. Mm -hmm. But right. I, I totally agree. Um, trans women should not be allowed to box biological women in any form of combat sports. But other sport, I think we have to look at, you know, I listen to Sharon Davis and I respect Sharon's views and, um, you know, she's entitled to her opinion, same as we are. But yep. we need more evidence. You know, I work with sports physiologists and I've got one who's told me, yeah, they, they, you have a slight advantage, but it depends on how far you are in your transitioning. Yep. I know my testosterone level is near enough as low as what um, Sharon said hers is because I have my blood and my testing done every six months. OK. One thing I'd like to ask us, I, I mean, I guess it, what is good about this is we can sit down this and we can debate it sensibly and rationally. Uh, sometimes on social media, these things get out of control because it just becomes name calling. But if we can sit down and rationally and talk about these to make sure uh, all parties feel happy. I was going to ask, Frida, can I ask you, um, uh, as a, a member of the trans community, do you think how are they reacting to uh, this new policy, say, for the triathlon? Do they feel that this feels fair? Does it feel like common sense at play? Well, no, it doesn't feel fair because it seems like segregation and it feels like, well, if I was a sports person, I'm, I'm forced to play with men. And I don't have the... I mean, I don't want this to trickle down to the amateur level. I wouldn't want somebody who, who is trans to suddenly think they can't be involved in sports because sport is not just about... It's not just about pure science and physicality. It's about striving, being the best person you can be and being and, and overcoming things. And I think trans people relate to that because in their daily lives. So when we look at trans, uh, when we look at sporting heroes, we're not looking at the stats. We're looking at this person is a great example of somebody that's, you know, fought for what they wanted to achieve in life. And I think there's another, there's another layer to the sporting story. That, so I know I can understand Sharon Davis saying, you know, uh, we have to look at the science because there is a sport science, but all that is like, I was thinking about, you know, the women's Euros, the, uh, the, the lionesses. Uh, yep. If you, if you look at the parity, there, there were 32 year old women on the same field as 17 year olds. Uh, sorry, 18 year olds. And I was thinking, well, if you're going to talk about parity, you can't cherry pick. You know, you've got to, if you had, if you had to look at sport completely in the sense of science and parity, Sharon Davis wouldn't be allowed to compete because she, well, how tall is she? You know what I mean? It's like, you'd have to say, well, you're too physically big to be a swimmer because you're going to win everything. Do you know what I mean? Well, so you can't, well, think, you can't do that. I think that's rather. That's rather different, I, isn't I, it? Sort of, uh, that I have to say. And, and Kelly, what I mean, what do you yeah. feel about what Frida said there? As someone who's been involved in sport, no, I, in I, life? I, sort of, I, I agree with your your view on that. You know, you sport is sport. We have categories in sport. You yeah. know, in and someone, yeah, you do get tall women, you do get smaller women, you do get taller men. You know, you, you get take heavyweight boxing. Yeah, Lennox Lewis, who I looked after, he was six 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 six. And nearly 17 and a half stone, he could fight someone that was 13 and a half stone and, or mm. sorry, 14 stone and maybe six well, foot. You know, that's just the human, all human bodies are different. But sport well, that, has to that's be. That's kind of what I was saying. Be, sorry, I just I like, say, so my no point of view is because like, no such thing as exactly. a level playing field in sport. Mm. Um, you know, yeah. I was referring to like, yeah, Sharon Davis has he's got quite big shoulders, she is a very powerful woman. And she's a good swimmer, but she has trained for that. You have exactly. to remember, mm. sports people train for all their life. And it's also, as I said earlier, it's a mental thing as well with sport. You drive yeah, right. yourself on to achieve something. And we have, we have opposite sides. You know, we have scientists who say there is, no, there is no advantage. We need the scientists to get around the table and discuss this fairly. Yeah. You know, we can't use the trans community as a football to be kicked about by say, right-wing politicians, anti-trans people. You know, I'm all for sitting around a table and talking and discussion. And whatever comes out right, if the science comes out right, which Sharon says 100%, then we go with yeah. that. If the science right. comes out right that, that trans women don't have an advantage, then we should go with that. 
Kelly, uh, thank you. And it's been very interesting hearing all your thoughts tonight uh, and Sharon's as well. And this is something that isn't going to be sorted out today for sure. But at least discussions have started and, and moves have been made. Uh, made. Thank you. Frida, thank you very much. Kelly, thank you very much. I wish you both a very happy new year.